So how do you kickstart your travel blog, um, particularly for the Philippines? Um, I was asked this today, and asking how do you actually get subscribers? How do you get people to watch your video? The easiest answer to that is it's not about gadgets, it's not about SEO, it's not about being um, computer savvy or fantastic with a camera. It's about actually having something to say or for people to see. Um, you can fluff it up over time. What happens if you look at my original videos, they weren't great and I sort of progressed because I bought more and more equipment. <laughs> but people were still watching the videos before but just in smaller numbers. Uh, you have to see this as a journey. Um, it's not something that you can really force. For example, if you're trying to make something interesting that isn't very interesting, then it's not going to really happen. An example is I do surveying. Now, if you want a boring uh, YouTube channel, that's a fantastic subject to cover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't get many viewers, um, but the whole point is, it's not actually. I've actually got a YouTube channel for asset surveying, by the way, but it's for a specific task, um, which is not related to getting mass users looking at it, um, because there is no interest in it. Um, that's the key element. It's got to be interesting, and you've got to look at what do people actually want to see. And with the Philippines, they want to see the family life. They want to see the wet markets. They want to see uh, the different produce in supermarkets. They want to know how much things are going to cost, how to do immigration processing, um, what problems you face. What's it like riding in a taxi? What's it like downtown in rush hour? They want to know the stuff that is so day-to-day -day that when you live there, you don't even notice it. Um, for example, on my Spanish channel, one of the most interest, well, high volume um, channels is relating to actually wandering around the town here. It's only a small town, but people want to see what's there. And that's the prime example. You're just wandering around your neighborhood going, this is my local shop, this is the uh, supermarket, this is the garage, this is a guy changing a tire. All of that sort of stuff people are interested in because it's very, very different culturally. It doesn't need a big intro. Um, you probably noticed I've gone back to a more simple intro system because I don't like intros. I'll be honest with you, I don't like TV credits, I don't like anything. I don't, my wife will tell you, I don't know any actors or anything, or who they are in any movies or anything because I've got no interest. Um, it doesn't make any difference to me. So I have no interest in knowing who makes this or does that. Um, because the whole point of movies, for example, is it's make believe in the first place. So it's not as if I'm sitting there watching a um, documentary on a specific topic that the person has a very great depth of interest in. And that would be somebody would actually be interested in connecting with. Uh, a movie is just disconnected from reality, so as such, don't need to know. But when you're doing these YouTube vlog things, there's a connection. So you need to build up on that. The first thing I want to do is, if you're doing an intro, keep it as short and simple as possible. Um, it doesn't need to be flashy. It, even like, you see the latest ones, the intro is actually appearing here, and it's already doing its little fancy bit, as I'm talking because it doesn't take you away from what's actually happening on the video. The video is still continue talking because a lot of my videos are actually designed so that it can be used as an audio book um, because a lot of the information is not visual. The reason for that is actually done on purpose um, because I like to share information um, and as such I know many people actually do listen to me without actually watching the videos. They actually listen to the audio. So you've got that sort of aspect of things where don't just assume everybody sees what you see, uh, what you're doing, um, but also they may not always want to see it. So you don't need to force it in that direction. You don't need a big 10, 15 second intro when your video is only about one, two minutes long. Um, and then it's followed by an outro, uh, the, the, the bit that comes on the end. 
for another 10, 15 seconds, because that's nearly half the length of a video. It's just pointless. So you, my, my own personal view is keep it short, keep it simple, and concentrate on the actual information you're trying to share. Concentrate on connecting with the people that do subscribe already. Message them, you know, when they leave comments, reply to the comments. If you have um, a lot of other similar channels you connect with, that will boost your channel quite quickly. Because you can also say to somebody else, can you have a look at my channel? Because I've only got like 80 subscribers, how can I boost it? Can you have a look, what do you think of my videos? And get some of the other people from the other channels to look at you. Because um, they might actually turn around and do something to promote your channel for you. Because they might turn around and say, well, your channel's all right. I think you just need like more people to review it. So they might do a little mini video going, oh, I've been over this video channel today. I'll just have a look. And I think this guy's really interesting. Go and have a look. And then they promote that on their channel. And that creates a cross-platform where people start mixing between um, channels within that niche where you get lots of because let's face it most of the subscribers in the Philippine channels are interwoven in some way um, whether they're on the same forums or on the same shared YouTube channels or just following the same things randomly because obviously Google searches throw the same things up again and again um, and they're normally written by the same people so obviously you've got that going on as well so there's a lot of stuff that indirectly pulls everything together so I would say concentrate on just the content the rest of it you can do later but also take criticism um, one of the things I noticed about the video today I looked at on that channel is the volume's too low um, I'd recommend getting an external mic getting a a more professional one. I wouldn't say go as far as I've gone, um, especially now I've got a grounding problem in the building that's actually causing a buzz on the system. Um, but I would say spending 80, 100 dollars on a good microphone will actually help you increase your channel reach because the volume's right, the sound quality is better, and later on get a better webcam or just go on something like a GoPro you know I'm not a I'm not a big fan of the GoPro as a camera I'm, I think for vlogging though it's it's all right I, I've done a lot of the recent stuff on these and I do think they work quite well um, for doing short videos um, but the the DSLR I have is too bulky for, for a lot of stuff I want to do um, where I can th can throw my GoPros in my bag because uh, because I've, I've got two of them. Um, I can throw them in my bag, and if one of the batteries go flat, I just pick up the other camera and I just continue. Um, but yeah, it's all about content. Once you get going, improve your quality of your camera, improve the quality of your equipment. Um, don't invest anything in software to start with. Um, one of the things I would actually say, let me get the price for this for you. Uh, one of the things I will say, there is a piece of software that I think will actually help. It's better than um, using the um, Microsoft, um, what they call Movie Maker. Uh, it's using Filmora Wondershare uh, video editor, and I think it's only about fifty dollars. Let me just double check. Because for that, that that's a good piece of software for the money, uh, because it's very smooth, it's very fast moving. Um, you can actually get trial off the website as well. Let's just find the buy page. Buy me. Uh, just watch the audio tracks in there though, I'll tell you that now because I put some audio up before with the ones that are supposed to be tied with it for free and then I got several people going, oh you've used our, used our software, we want, we want the creative comment, we want the rights over it and it's like, 
it's actually out of the software. What, what, what do you mean? It's actually down as free use. But in the end, I just had to overwrite the music, just wasted my time. Uh, I cannot see the price on it because it's. Don't you just love it when websites give you everything but you the information you want? I'll click download now and see what comes up somewhere. No, it's going to ask me to download it and buy it. It's only about fifty, sixty dollars anyway. But the website doesn't actually have the price on it. How stupid is that? Uh, yeah, but it's um, Filmora. If you go to www wondershare.net and you'll, you'll come across it very easy to use it's very slick very um, user friendly let's see real, let me come on this is terrible oh hang on we found some fact Went back to the main site and now I found it. Yes, yeah, $50. Well worth the $50. It's very quick, very smooth, reduces the file sizes. Um, so when you upload, it's not uploading a 2 gig file or down, get it down to 300 meg or whatever, depending on the quality you want. So, highly recommend it. But beyond that, I would just say get more used to being in front of the camera. Um, you become more relaxed over time. Because your first video, you're going to be quiet and you're not going to talk too much, um, and you'll go um a lot and things like that. That disappears over time. That's why I say you need to just adapt. Um, you become louder as well because when you start doing more and more videos, you begin to project your voice more, and instead of being monotone, you get a bit of variety in there as well. So I hope that helps because. That's the best advice I can give, is quite simply just run with it and try and spend more time engaging with other people. Don't concentrate too much on the SEO and all that sort of stuff because I'll be honest with you, the Philippines has been hammered to death um, with SEO and stuff. People have been doing it a long time. My original website started in 2007 and that went on for, well, this the cbuxpat.com still up, but I don't actually write on it. The YouTube videos just transfer over there these days, but the original uh, content is still there from 2007, 2008 onwards. Those sort of things you will not be able to compete with because they've been there for so long. What you've got to do is create your own environment where people actually want to take an interest in you, and that's the important bit. It's about you. Thanks for watching.